Andre, please come up and accept your award. Oh, I need my glasses. Thank you, David, so much. I am so, so grateful and so honored by this prize and by being here. Thank you also, Jason Guberman, for extending this prize to me post-COVID. And thank you, the American Sephardi Federation, for the wonderful work you are doing to keep Sephardi culture alive today. I want to thank a third person, but more about him in a minute. First, however, let me tell you a little anecdote about prizes. When I was in an American school in Rome, I was a very well-behaved boy. Not only was I the only Jewish student in a Catholic private school, hence self-compelled to be well-behaved. Not only was I receiving financial aid, which also explains why I was spectacularly well-behaved, <laughs> but most importantly because the boys in that high school were under strict orders never to be caught drinking inside or outside the school. When my parents took me to a restaurant for dinner, I was never going to be caught even sniffing a glass of wine. However, the reason why I bring this up is that towards the end of our senior year, around 10 or so many students in my class were caught drinking in one of the expensive private clubs in Rome. They all ended up ratting on each other, which was to be expected as the brothers in the school exerted strict discipline. What happened is that six of those 10 students were the best students in my graduating class. They were, in fact, honor students. To punish them, the school decided to withdraw their honors status on graduation day. One student was left standing to receive all the honors, me. <laughs> Those who know me, I, I never think much of myself as deserving any honors or that I take myself so seriously or to echo my father, Dans le pays des aveugles, le borgne roi. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed is ki king. In case you don't get the joke, I was the one-eyed. I, if I get a prize today, it's because I was slightly better and better behaved, certainly, than those who really deserve it. But this prize does matter. It represents the efflorescence of a world which, for the zeal, which but for the zeal of the committee and of the commitment of the American Sephardi Federation is on the verge of disappearing. Iraqi Jews go back at least 2,500 years to the times of the Babylonian captivity. I can't think of an older uh, community of Jews. Uh, forget the fact that most Ashkenazi Jews know next to nothing about Sephardi Jews and know of only European Jewry, but that Christians never even know there was even a Jew in the Middle East. And a huge number of us, of, of the us who built and ran, and, sorry, a huge number of the Jews who, from the Middle East built and ran hospitals, law firms, newspapers, department stores, cinema studios, and also ran, as did my father, the Egyptian schmata business. <laughs> Entire neighborhoods in my city of Alexandria were built by, not by an Egyptian Jew, but by an Iraqi family, the Smuhas, who also built the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. To say nothing of the Jewish Iraqi families that essentially built Egypt's banking system, which though looted by Nasser, 
continues to basically define the economy of, of Egypt. Our world is exceptionally diverse. Many of us still speak French, a holdout not of French colonialism, but of the Alliance Israelite Universelle. When Claude Lanzmann, the director of the movie Shoah, interviewed various Jewish communities that had paid the ultimate price for Hitler, under Hitler, he always traveled with interpreters. One community where he did not need an interpreter was the community of Salonika. Why didn't he need an interpreter? Because all the survivors of the Holocaust there spoke French. Many of us still do. My children speak French, and I hope that French doesn't die with them, even if the French are not the most philo-Semitic country on planet Earth. <laughs> I'm not asking the American Sephardi Federation to keep French alive, but I want to congratulate its members for keeping the Sephardi heritage alive, whatever form that heritage takes. As I, st as I said, the world of Sephardi Jews is exceptionally diverse. Now let me pay a very short tribute to the third person who represented the continuing excellence of the totally urbane and modern rich culture of Sephardi Jewry. He was not always a religious man and not always walked toe to toe with the government of Israel. But then he was what so many Sephardi Jews I grew up with were, free thinkers, inventive, resourceful, and above all, distinguished and honorable in every way. A man I am sure many of you knew, and that for the past two decades I considered my friend, Ezra Zilka. He's not with us any longer, but he is still very much with us. Thank you, David, again. Thank you all.